Hey everybody, I just wanted to have a little bit of a conceptual discussion about voltage and current. So let's say you have a like a container of water here and then another one here. And then you, you connect these two with a pipe. Okay, so what's going to happen? Like nothing, right? There's not going to be any water flowing left or right in this pipe. However, what happens if you lower one of these like this? Right, then this pipe is connected like that. Now what's going to happen? Water is going to flow this way, right from the higher one to the lower one. Let's say the ground is over here, and then this is like on a stand. So imagine, like, what's the gravitational potential energy of one water molecule right here? It's like its weight times this height. Right? What about a water molecule right here? Right? Its weight times this height. So that gravitational potential energy, right, there's a difference between here and here. Right? This difference, this difference in height. So that difference in the gravitational potential energy is kind of analogous to you have a electric potential of some charge and an electric potential of some charge and the difference in the electric potential is voltage. So this voltage causes current to flow just like this difference in the gravitational potential energy causes masses to have kinetic energy. Right? Like a water molecule is going to be traveling this way. So this voltage, right, the change in height, change in height analogously, right, the voltage causes a current. And when water flows, we even call that current. So that voltage causes current. What happens, let's say, back to our water tanks. I replace the pipe with one that's like this. Right, then water is going to flow pretty quickly compared to if I replace the pipe with one that looks more like this. Right, then water's still going to flow, but it's going to go slower. So then it's analogous to like this has more resistance, so there will be less current flowing versus the huge water pipe is less resistance, so more current will be flowing. Okay, so try and remember this kind of mechanical analogy for electrical systems. And then here's one example called the Wheatstone Bridge. So, so look at this geometry. This particular application is really if you have some unknown resistor and you want to try and measure it, you set up, you, you hook up a battery, so a constant voltage, two fixed resistors that we know the values and then this is some kind of potenti potentiometer where you can adjust the resistance and this is a like really precise current sensor typically a galvanometer so this measures current and what you do is you tweak this until the current through the meter is zero you just because let's say this is a higher voltage than this one, right? That's like the water tank is higher and this water tank is lower, so current will flow this way. So you tweak this resistor, which is kind of like adjusting the height of this stand over here, right? So you tweak the resistor until this voltage here, I'll call this VA, over here, equals the voltage over here, I'll call this VB. So if these voltages are equal, 
that's like the two water tanks being at the exact same height, there will be no current flowing left or right. Which means, really, the circuit looks like... like this. Right, so the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. And then if there's no current flowing this way or this way, then that means the current here is the same as the current here. Right, so the current here is the same as the current here. I'll just call it I1. The current here is the same as the current here. I'll just call that I2. And then the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. And so with all of that, if we know R1, R2, and R3, we can solve for this unknown resistor because if you just look at, right, here to here is the same voltage as here to here. So that means I1, R1 equals I2, R2. And then if the voltage here is the same as the voltage here, then that means I1, R3 equals I2, R, X. And look at this. You can just kind of divide one by the other, and then you have something that looks like this. So then we can solve for this unknown. So then our x is, let's just move this on this side and then just take the reciprocal of this. So there you go. So if you know R1, R2, R3, you can solve for the unknown resistor. That's the application of this particular configuration. But really, it was a lesson in voltage and current like this. Okay, let me know if you have questions. I'll see you on the next video.